Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk, a listener-supported ministry. In fact, thank you so much for being part of that support for James Dobson Family Institute. Well, welcome back to Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh. You know, I think that every one of us enjoys at least some form of music, some style or another, that really kind of gets us going. Reminds me of the words of the psalmist in Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Wow. Now, chances are you probably have heard those words before. Uh, There really is such beauty and power and a redemptive healing spirit in singing for and to the Lord. And spelled out right there in the Bible are the words that encourage us to do so. So if you love music, well, stay tuned. Returning to Family Talk today for the conclusion of our exclusive two-part interview is John Cooper, the lead vocalist, bassist, and co-founder of the Christian rock band called Skillet. That's right, just like a frying pan. John found his calling in singing about Jesus and co-founded Skillet back in 1996. Skillet is a two-time Grammy Award-nominated band. They have gone platinum 12 times. That means the band has sold over 12 million albums worldwide. And on today's program, you're going to hear about how John and his band chose the name Skillet and also about how he tours on the road with his family. He'll also talk about the book he wrote back in 2020 called Awake and Alive to Truth. John Cooper is married to his wife, Corey, who is also a member of the band Skillet, and together they have two children. Recently, John Cooper sat down with our own Dr. Tim Clinton at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Orlando, where this interview was recorded. These two men of God really had fun together, mixing it up, and you'll enjoy their conversation. So let's join them right now, right here on Family Talk. Hey, John, welcome back. What a conversation yesterday, talking about the seeds that were planted deep inside of you that have emerged in this firm commitment to truth. I wanted to ask you about your wife, Corey, and your children. Corey actually plays in the band, is that mm. right? Yeah, that's right, my wife How'd you guys meet and yeah, put, that, put the dots together for us? Sure, I'd love to. So I've been married for now for, we just celebrated 27 years, uh, or excuse me, 26 years of marriage, 27 years of skillet. So I got it backwards, my bad. We have been on the road the whole time, we have two kids. My kids are now 20 and 17. Wow. My son's almost 18. And um, both passionate followers of Jesus. And God has blessed us so much. And we lived our whole lives on the road. My kids have traveled the world. My kids have played with, um, I mean, you name the metal band, my kids have been on the road with them and played a gig, you know, Metallica, Iron Maiden, Alice Cooper. There's nobody we haven't played with, all right? And my kids have, have been with us doing that. John, you know, life on the road is, it's tough. You're up against everything, a lot of challenge, pushback, craziness, but staying anchored spiritually. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you keep yourself? How do you keep your family there? Yeah. One of the best things about our life, as I've said, my kids are on the road. They grew up on the road. I do need to say, I, we do go we have a local church that we've been a part of since the beginning. I've always said to people, I think that's one of the biggest reasons that Skillet has been so grounded. We've always been considered sort of an outreach of my church. We're not just alone doing our own thing, but we sort of implemented on the road that we would worship with our kids. And sometimes that would be the whole band would worship with our kids or just me and my kids or just my wife and my kids. And we taught our kids what the worship songs mean. And it's sort of at times a creative thing when other bands would sometimes join us. And so, you know, a funny thing, we were doing a secular tour (laughs) called Carnival of Madness. And uh, years ago, we were one of the bands, there's bigger bands than us. And there was a guy on that tour that I had toured with years before that I had a a role in him coming to Christ uh, because we had toured together and he's in a heathen rock band and we talked about the Lord. I prayed with him about receiving the Lord 
as a savior and it didn't quite take, but three years later it did take and he came to the Lord and I, and we toured together again and he said, Hey, I am living for Christ now. And he said, but I need church. I don't know if I can make it out here. So we started holding these little services and inviting people. And so we've done those sort of things and taught our kids how to worship and taught our kids that actually in, in the presence of the Lord, people might not understand what's going on, but they might recognize that something truly wonderful is happening. They might want to know the truth. And it was great because then my kids got to eat lunch with people that would never go to church, don't like Jesus. And they got to see that we love those people. And they would say, can we go watch, you know, uh, Mr. So-and-so play? And I say, no, you can't because they, they say things that I don't want you to see, but you know, we have dinner with them. You know what I mean? They're our friends. And that was a really wonderful opportunity. You probably get this question a million times over. Skillet, where'd the name come from? Seriously. Yeah, I've never been asked that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. Everybody, well, he's going to Skillet. And every time I say, I, you know, it's the dumbest name. You have to understand that it was the 90s. And 90s, um, the, the dumber your name was, the cooler you were because it showed you just don't care. You know, like, I'm so cool, I don't have to think of a good name. That, that was the 90s, you know. We're skillet. Yeah, yeah. So, but but there was a reason. And when we got together, we were all from different bands. And so it was actually my pastor said, hey, you guys are all from different bands. It's almost like cooking, taking all these different ingredients and throwing it in a skillet. And then somebody goes, Dude, you should call it Skillet. That'd be funny. <laughs> it's the 90s. That'd be awesome. And I, and I said, okay. And that, the, that's a true story. That's a true story. I was like, it won't last very long, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a lesson to us. Uh, stuck like glue. Children, make sure you make good decisions. You know, it might last you your lifetime, you know? John, talk to us about the industry. No doubt you've seen a lot. By the way, you've had probably some... Amazing moments. And anything stick out in your mind? Uh, something that was just like, this is unbelievable. And you sense the power of God all in one. Mm. I've got too many stories to tell. They're, they're amazing. You know, uh, and, and I love to tell them because I, I always tell people, I want to make sure you, everybody understands since you don't know me, I would never brag on myself. I love to boast on Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, the Bible says. I love to boast about the amazing work the Holy Spirit does when you're just being faithful in your daily life. And I think that's something that everybody listening can relate to. I, I, I can imagine people just turning it up right now saying, this is like counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. You <laughs> yes. know, it's like, click this thing up here for a moment. Yes. I mean, this is, this is what God does. He does amazing things in our daily lives. There's a story that I've only told a few times when people ask me this question, but this is a crazy one. Now, it's not as much in the moment as you said, but we received an email in 2015 and it said, okay, in 2010, this email said, me and my husband were watching TV. There was an NFL commercial and it had a song on it that we loved. We we're like, who is this band? This song is so good. And they said, we looked it up and it was, it was a song called Hero from your band Skillet. Didn't know anything about Skillet. Me and my husband both were uh, in the pornography film industry. We made porno pornographic films and we loved this song. We're like, who is this band Skillet? I want to listen to this music. And we found your music and began listening, became huge Skillet fans, had no idea about that you were a Christian band, didn't know anything about it. And eventually I said, I wonder what that song Hero is actually about. And I found an interview with you talking about it. And you said that your hero is Jesus Christ. And I said, Jesus Christ is here. I wonder what that means. And I decided I would go to church to find out what Jesus was all about. I got born again and I led my husband to the Lord. We got out of the porn industry into a church. And three years later, we felt the Lord calling us to create a ministry ministering to people in the pornographic film industry and all from a TV commercial. You can't make this up. There, there's nothing you could do to say you could make this happen. This is about a sovereign God that creates these amazing opportunities to accomplish his will when you're just obedient to your calling. Now, I have had moments when I've been playing live and I have said something on stage that I just knew was, I don't know the language, different Christians like different language, prompted by the Holy Spirit to say, uh, whatever you, your particular language is, 
It's something I might not normally say, but I said it at that time. And for whatever particular thing was happening, you can experience the power of the truth of God. That's, I mean, the word of God is alive. So when you speak the word of God, you know, as uh, uh, John Frame, the theologian John Frame says, when you, when you speak, read aloud, quote, the word of God, the attributes of God are in the word, is absolutely inseparable from his power. And I have seen that happen. And I have seen people come to tears in a moment that I absolutely would not expect. I've met people after those things that say, I was on drugs for 10 years and I went to your concert and all that you said was is that Jesus Christ wants to set people free and in that moment I never ever wanted to do meth again. I don't I can't explain it. That's what they said to me. That's just power of of the Lord. Years ago I interviewed a gentleman Randall Wallace wrote Braveheart. Braveheart, my favorite movie of all yeah. time. And and you think of some of the screenplays that he had done. And I asked him, "What prompts those kind of stories. Where does it come from? You know, and he was explaining to me that I really try to press into what I hear the scream of culture saying and try to give life to that. When I think of lyrics mm. and writing, and I'm thinking about a lot of what we hear, John, what happens? My son, Zach, told me about this uh, guy, NF. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yep. he said, Dad, listen to some of his stuff because he's writing about mental health related themes. Yeah. You got to hear this. People are listening to this stuff because they resonate with this kind of storyline and they want, it's like the scream of their heart. Uh, John, take us into your world and what you're trying to get done. And what do you think mm-hmm. God's doing in and through you, that voice you're giving to this industry? Yes. Well, I think that rock music has always lended itself to those kind of people that you just mentioned. NF is definitely on the that sort of like his bag, if you will, that says his lane and he's really good at it. Rock music has always spoken to those kind of people because people that listen to rock music always they feel on the on the margins, you know, they feel not like they don't quite belong, they're the outcast. And so I've always sung about those things because I can relate to loneliness, you know, as we shared on the other program, my mom passed away. Um, I didn't share about my angst and fighting and, and if I could say it, hatred for my own dad after that, that God did save me from in an incredible way. But I had several years of very hard times. So I write a lot about those same topics because everybody can relate to them, you know? So in fact, we have a song called The Last Night. And it's a song that is about, it's a duet between me and my wife. And in the song, I am talking her out of suicide. And that song, if you Google top 100 songs about suicide, that song is on that list. That's from 2006. Everybody can relate to that. And we were playing that song one time on a club tour down in Atlanta. We were opening up for another band, sold out show, 800 people, small club. And there's a lot of people there that didn't know me. I was signing autographs afterwards. And the other band we were playing with was a much darker, heavier band than us. And I saw this guy, six foot three, dreadlocks, piercings on his face, staring at me. And I thought, that he wanted to fight me. Yeah, he, I had this vibe. This is, is, is going to come in hand. Yeah, because I'm I'm Christian, and I I said this thing about this song the last night. I said this is a song. Here's what it's about. It's about mental health. People want to commit suicide, but I want you to know that you matter to to Jesus. You matter to God. That's all I said. And after I signed autographs, this guy walked up to me. I honestly thought he was going to start trying to get me to fight him or something. And he says, "Hey, I don't know your band. I came to see their band." But he said. You played this song. I don't remember the name of it, but you said that God cares about me. Do you actually mean that? And I said, yes, I do mean that. And he said, why? Why would God care about me? And I explained a little bit why God cared about him. And I said to him, I said, hey, would you let me pray for you? And he's like, what do you mean? I said, would you let me pray to God for you? We'll pray together now. And he said, I, I've never had anybody pray for me before. So, wow. well, maybe I'll do it now in the middle of this club. He's like, okay. And I, I said, well, all we got to do is, it's easy. All you do is close your eyes, we'll pray. And I start praying for him in this six foot three giant that I thought was going to tear my head off, just 
his head falls into my chest and he just starts weeping is, is a moment I will, I will never forget. John, I know that in your life and in what you represent to the greater world community, uh, you want to stand for truth. Mm. You wrote this book, Awake and Alive to Truth. Again, I know you had a song along the same theme, but in it you talk about this woke world that we're living in mm. that's lost itself that is confused about what truth is. I have a good friend, Christian psychiatrist friend, Carl Benzio. He says, truth is dying, Tim. That's what the problem is. Well, truth doesn't die, but we all know what he's saying there. Yes. And you push and you challenge people to think critically. I love that. Uh, as I read your book and gone through the pages of it, you talk openly about this postmodernism that we're in, relativism, Marxism, atheism, new age movement, so much more. And the challenge of diversity, inclusion, and uh, social justice, CRT, and so much more. All this stuff and the confluence of it and what it's doing. And it's muzzling people. People are getting lost. And they're angry. They're confused. Mm. They're silent. They're shame by what they think they believe. They're, they're just all over the map. You take us then into the awe of God. Mm. You take us into the authority of Scripture. Mm-hmm. You push, John, you're a rebel. That doesn't even make sense Mm. when you really look at the world that you quote, in, if you will, (laughs) in but not of. Yes. (laughs) That's the piece. Speak to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is the thing about, let's just say wokeness in general. Wokeness is not, it is not simply a culture war issue. Wokeness depends, uh, I shouldn't say depends, relies on the death of God. And, and this is why it's it's not a culture war issue. This is a spiritual issue. Wokeness is angry that there is no justice in the world. Wokeness is angry at the human condition. Wokeness is angry that there is a created order. It's mad at a God for the fact that there is a created order and it doesn't want a created order. It's says, angry at God that you made me a boy when I think I'm actually really a girl. It's angry at God for whatever else. And so it is an atheistic worldview. And so when you're living in that, it, 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 you're angry that there's never going to be justice. The wrong things will never be made right. And you are looking to try to make the world right by pointing your finger at everyone else and, and yelling and screaming and all sorts of other things. The gospel comes in and says, you've pinpointed something true. <laughs> there isn't justice in this world. You've pinpointed something true. Life is hard. It stinks. It's not fair. Some people's moms die when they're teenagers. Other people's dads leave them. Other people are treated terribly because of the color of their skin. Other people are fill in the blank. You've pinpointed something absolutely true, but you are giving the wrong answer. The right answer is that Jesus says, I will make the wrong things right. I will, in my time, I will bring justice. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. There is a time when Christ will come back and he will judge, you know, the living and the dead sort of thing. There is an answer here that will bring you peace. Wokeness, uh, the critical theory stuff, the Marxist stuff, the sexual revolution, or just atheistic progressivism. All of those things do nothing more than pinpoint a reason to have grievance and hatred and it just stokes it until you're so angry that you hate everything and everybody and you even hate the you just hate the fact that you're alive and it's no wonder that suicide rates are just i mean they're skyrocketing with young people because we have told young people you're a cosmic accident it's nothing but darwin anyway There is no transcendent meaning. There is no transcendent order. Nothing is true. Everything is relativized. The only thing that matters is the way you feel on the inside. We've told them that they are supposed to be nihilist. And then we said, but we also want you to know there's nobody better than you in the whole world. So they've tried to synthesize nihilism and self-help. And And there's there's no no reason to believe. There's there's no no hope. hope. Yeah, there's no hope. There is no hope. So no wonder they're killing themselves. That that is a wrong view of the world. And so I believe, yes, we are being rebels because we have an answer that is so glorious and will bring you so much peace because peace is going to be found when you find your place in God's good world. And it's so peaceful and so wonderful. John, when I think of audiences out there, the CDC came out with a study 
this year shared the results. In 2021, 30% of our daughters, they said, mm-hmm. our daughters seriously contemplated suicide yes. in 2021. Yep. That's not a problem. That's an absolute disaster. It's epidemic. It is. And it's this searching. Here's the upside on it. There's a searching going on. Something's not okay. There's this discontent that's deep down inside. Yes. And you see it, I'm sure, every night, every concert you go to. Mm -hmm. These people are crying out. They're saying something. They're trying desperately to find something. The that old statement, the man knocking on the door of the harlot is simply looking for God. Mm -hmm. And so let's close this piece up for us and um overcoming. Yes. Breaking free. I know you quoted Galatians 5, 1. It's for freedom, Mm -hmm. not bondage. It's for freedom that Christ has come to set us free. Yes. Kiss the sun and you'll be free indeed. Mm -hmm. Bring us home. Well, I think that a great way to tie it up is to explain the differences in the worldviews. So I would say, again, you can kind of insert a lot of words here. You could call it wokeness. You could call it atheistic secularism. Okay. You can call it a lot of different things. We all know the secular revolution that's happening. It believes that Christianity is responsible for putting everyone in slavery. And that if we kill God or if we break free from Christianity, if we break free from traditional sexual mores, that we are going to lead to liberation. That's a lie. The Christian worldview says, no, 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 you are actually in slavery now. You are in bondage to sin. It's the reason that you are so angry and so sad and so lonely and unredeemed. And it is Christ who wants to set you free from that slavery. So it really matters because we're talking about two very different lives. Either Christianity is either the one that enslaves you or Christianity is the thing that sets you free. But the Bible has a great twist on it, actually, to confuse it even more, but it's wonderful. Actually, the Bible says it more like this. You were a slave to sin, and now you are a slave to righteousness. Now you're a bondservant to to righteousness, which is where true freedom is. So it's the definition of freedom here that we can't get confused on, because the the woke think that freedom just means absolute freedom freedom to do anything in the entire world that you want to do. And where does it, it leads us into moral anarchy and the chaos we see in the 2020s. But Christ wants to set you free by ordering your life. What a wonderful, I hope if anybody's listening that doesn't know Jesus or doesn't know how to talk to their kids about this sort of thing, I think that it's rooted in this idea of these two different worldviews. One leads to death, one leads to life. Now, as you were saying those words, my mind went to the Apostle Paul where he just said, that I may know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's resonating, that I may know that Jesus Yes, and the power of his resurrection. It's for freedom that he has come to set us free. That's it. Awaken Alive to Truth is the book subtitled Finding Truth in the Chaos of a Relativistic World. Mm -hmm. John Cooper, Skillet, an amazing time together. Thank you so much. Well, John Cooper truly is a warrior for the Lord, and I hope you enjoyed the stories he shared with our own Dr. Tim Clinton for the two-part conversation we've heard over the past couple of days here on Family Talk. Now, to learn more about John Cooper, the band Skillet, or to listen to any part of the conversation you might have missed, you can visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash family talk. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash family. Family Talk. And remember, you can also listen in on the official Family Talk JDFI app. You can easily share the program with friends and loved ones. Simply visit your app store and you can download it for free. Now, before we leave the air for today, I want to give you an update about the $300,000 matching grant that we had in place last month. I am excited to announce that we did, in fact, meet our match. We asked you to partner with us and fight for families and children and preborn babies everywhere. And your response was so mighty, we went well past our goal. 
From all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, we sincerely want to thank you. Because of you, we are able to create more programs and materials for moms and dads and people everywhere. And over the next few weeks, make sure you're listening in as we'll be explaining how you can get involved and come alongside us to support expecting parents, young families, and new mothers in need. You know, we can all change lives for the better when we all stand together. I'm Roger Marsh, and from all of us here at the JDFI, thank you for making us a part of your day. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for another edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Till then, may God continue to richly bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. Are you searching for a way to stay connected on issues that matter to you in your everyday life? Hi, this is Dr. Tim Clinton for Family Talk. I hope you'll follow us on Twitter. Our feed is full of engaging content that you're going to want to interact with and pass along to some people you love. You can listen to our popular broadcast, stay informed with Dr. Dobson's newsletter, or read our blogs and articles and more. Find our Twitter page by searching for Dr. James Dobson FT. That's Dr. James Dobson FT. I think you'll be glad you did.